Well, it was close to dinner, and they had been walking for a long time, so they were tired and hungry, and Jesus acted like he was going to go on far. Now, they still didn't know who he was, but they were kind. They said, why don't you come and stay and eat a bite with us? Because you've got to be hungry. And, and so they sat down at the table, and they got out their food, and this wonderful stranger said, I will do the blessing. And he took the bread, and he broke it, and there were the holes in his hands. It was Jesus. Oh. They understood it was really Jesus. Oh, they were so astonished. Oh, I bet they were. They had the risen Savior right there next to them. They talked to him and walked with him, and they didn't even know it. Oh, but you know, Mrs. Hart, yeah. I love that story. But what do I tell my friend who doesn't believe? I mean, you know, two guys claiming that they saw Jesus doesn't really mean I have proof. Well, yes, history really demands a lot of eyewitnesses. Right. But Jesus did appear to many, many people, many times to the disciples and the women and the 500 and at the seashore. Right. He appeared so many times, and he ate with them, he talked with them, and they touched them. They probably even laughed and hugged each other a lot. Sure. And we also know it was true because their lives were changed. Hmm. How so? Well, after that, they started to tell the whole world that Jesus died and rose again. They were so brave. Hmm. And they even were put to death, some of them, and they were persecuted and beat and put in prison. But they didn't care. They were going to risk their life for Jesus. Now, if it wasn't true, would they really risk their life? No way. I mean, they didn't even risk their lives and just be crucified. They ran like chickens. Oh, oh, oh. Well, actually, these weaklings turned into powerhouses yes. because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we do have historical proof. And yes. all your witnesses yes. that yes. saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. Many, many. Oh, boy, I wish I was one of those guys on the road to Emmaus, talking and walking with my Savior. Well, you are. You can be. Because that's why we named our church Emmaus Lutheran Church. We are here on the road to Emmaus. Wow. Really? I always thought our name was like E-Mouse. You know, like Mickey Mouse used to be our mascot or something. I know, I run into that sometimes too. They, yeah. they look and they say, oh, you're from Emmaus, Lutheran. Really? And I go, no, Emmaus, it's an Easter story. Yeah. It's about the resurrection. And as we walk and talk with him mm -hmm. here at our wonderful Emmaus Church, we hope and pray that all of our families and all of our friends will worship. They'll pray, they'll read their Bible and study and praise the Lord that rose from the dead. I get it now. And you know what, Mrs. Lord? I have another piece of proof that Jesus is alive. And what is that? Me? Oh, I used to be one messed up, confused puppet, moping around, being all selfish. But then Jesus came in my heart, and I am changed. That's proof right there, isn't it? Oh, that's great, Scooter. I'm so proud of you. You really understand it. In fact, I'm going to put my favorite favorite Bible verse into your heart because I've been walking on the road to Emmaus so long that this is one of my favorites. Did not our hearts burn within us as we walked and talked as he opened up the scriptures for us on the road to Emmaus? Well, I like the thing. I love that verse. Yeah, you know, my heart is on fire because Jesus is alive. Kind of reminds me of that Alicia Keys song. My heart is on fire. We hope you enjoyed our scooter presentation of the road to Emmaus. 
I asked if I could give a little extra message to you because it's my favorite passage. We're not our hearts burning within us as we walked and talked and opened up scripture to us as we were on the road to Emmaus from Luke 23. It's just wonderful. And I've been here walking on the road to Emmaus for many, many years, and it's been wonderful because here we have the true word of God. We know about our living Savior who died and rose and will take us all to heaven eternally. So before I talk a little bit more about Emmaus, you know me, I have to do a magic trick. So I brought my three cards, and as you can see, they're different there's a red one in the middle and I bet you know exactly what that means this one represents Jesus and the criminals on the cross that were crucified beside him now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them inside of this empty tomb that I have here and I want to talk a little bit about them now we know the two criminals were very different weren't they the first criminal, he actually hurled insults to Jesus, said, well, if you're the son of God, why don't you come down from that cross and take us down too? And the other criminal said, oh, how can you talk like that? We deserve punishment. This man is perfect. He's holy. He's innocent. Oh, Jesus, would you please remember me when you get to your kingdom? And Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Oh, what a wonderful message that we get to go to with Jesus in paradise. So now I'm gonna take Jesus out. It's empty. The tomb is empty. Oh, 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 there's a message for us from Jesus. Oh, here it is, here it is. He is risen. He's not here. The tomb is empty. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Well, anyway, that's my new magic trick. It's not too great, but I hope you liked it. So like I said, we're going to talk today a little bit about those two disciples, Cleopas. And when I do a puppet show on them, I always have to name them. I go, Cleopas and Simon. We really don't know the other name. They loved Jesus, and they really were confused. They thought, oh, he's our king forever, and then they crucified him. And so they're walking home after a week of Passover celebration. And as they're walking along, Jesus appears to them. Now, we can tell who Jesus is, but he disguised himself. He was just a stranger. Now, I don't know why they would listen to him so carefully, but if you can imagine what Jesus would be like telling us the whole meaning of the Bible from beginning to end, what it was all about, how it all fit together, and why, finally, the one that was promised in the Old Testament had to come. He had to suffer. He had to die and rise again. And it all made a lot of sense to them. So when they finally got to the Emmaus, they said, hey, hey, man. You know, let's, let's be cool. Let's invite them to dinner. I don't know if they had uh, some fish and bread, but this new stranger said, I'll take the bread and bless it. And when he blessed it, they saw who he was. Their eyes were opened. I think they saw the holes, too, in his hands. It was Jesus Christ, the one who had died. He had risen. Those women were right. He wasn't there. He had risen from the dead. So now what does that mean to us? Well, we're walking and talking here on the road to Emmaus. I know at one time some of the children said, why are we called a mouse church? Why Emmaus? And so of course we explained it to them. It's really an Easter church because on Easter, these men were walking to Emmaus and that's where they learned uh, about the whole meaning of the Bible and scripture, the purpose for his coming to earth, how he died, how he rose, all of it fits together. And that's what we have here at Emmaus. We're walking and talking with Jesus every day here in our wonderful school. And even when you're at home during the quarantine, even more so, we're talking and walking with Jesus, our wonderful Savior. I don't know about you, but I always want to see him right here, especially sometimes when we are worship dancing. I feel like, you know, I'm dancing with Jesus and I can feel him. And I, I want to go have him sit down here and then I want to go plop up next to him and say, how you doing today, Jesus? Jesus. Wouldn't it be nice if we could physically touch him? Now, we can't quite do that, but spiritually, our hearts can burn within us because when we worship, when we pray, when we read our Bible, 
and it fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit, we truly do worship. And that's what burns within us. It isn't a physical fire. We're not going to strike a match. But the Holy Spirit strikes his match in our hearts. And not only do we believe, but we have to live it. And we live it by being kind and sweet to our family, especially at a time like this. And we constantly are praying more and more and more. I bet you're giving more time to Jesus and using your devotion centers. Remember, if you haven't, take that extra time and do some extra praying and studying and reading about him. Oh, he'll be just rejoicing and celebrating and dancing in heaven with you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful story about these two men walking to Emmaus. We're walking there too, and Jesus is walking with us. We're walking here at our Emmaus Lutheran School, and every day you can teach us and help us to learn more about you. Help us to get closer and closer to you, to study and pray and read your Bible so that our hearts will be burning within us also. We just love you so much, our heart, soul, and mind. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's meet Jesus, God's one and only Son. He came to earth to save us, each and every one. Jesus, our King, the very best in me. One time he rode into the town, sitting on a donkey. Into Jerusalem, for all to see. People cheer and celebrate it, waving palm tree leaves, shouting Hosanna, for the King had come that day. It's Jesus from Nazareth. was crucified. He gave himself up on a cross and then he died. But three days later he rose from that grave. His tomb is empty and our sins he forgave. He is risen. He is alive. Our Savior, our friend, our King Jesus is a okay. And now we celebrate Jesus, our risen King, who came to save us. And for this, we sing to the amazing things, to many to count. Let's all sing it, dance and shout. He did amazing things, to many to count. Let's all sing.